This week on the Modified World, I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about proper terminology. So please stay tuned. So welcome to the Modified World, the weekly web show about body modification. The people who do it, the people who get it, why it matters, and of course the occasional little bit of education along the way. I'm your host, the senior piercer up at the world-renowned Pangea Piercing, purveyor of professional videos about body modification on YouTube, and the second best dressed guy in the piercing industry next to Mito Hernandez, J.C. Potts. And this week, I've noticed that a lot of my viewers seem to really be still confused about terminology. Some of those people are actually even professional piercers and that makes me kind of sad to know that there's still folks out there using just completely improper terminology. Now while I'm not trying to purport to be Webster's Dictionary or the be all end all source of piercing information, I have been around for 18 or so years and I have learned a thing or two about some of the names of this stuff. So, without much further ado, first let's talk about jewelry. All right. One of the chief things to learn initially when we talk about threading, which threading is the mechanical closure that holds a barbell together, you've got two styles. You've got internal threading where the post actually has the hole drilled in it and there's threads tapped into that. And then you have external threading, which has the ball or whatever ornamental end drilled out and the screw threads are on the outside of the post. Naturally, more high-end professional piercers only use the internally threaded kind. So for the purposes of our discussion, that's what we're gonna limit ourselves to. There's also threadless jewelry, little snap together guys, of which Neo Metal is the patent holder on that and the purveyor of the fine stuff. Now, of course, you will find knockoffs, but if you want the good stuff, get real genuine neo metal. There's barbells. Barbell is just a straight post with a couple of ends on it. If one of those ends is flat, like a disc, we would probably call that a labrette. Not a labre. It's not a French word. It's actually some sort of like Native American thing or something like that. To be honest with you, I'm not 100%, but I know it's Lebret, not Lebray. We also have nostril screws. It's an ancient design originated in India. It's essentially just a, a bent piece of wire shaped into a, a bit of a U with a 90 degree turn to it with some sort of decorative end on there to keep it from going into your nose. People talk about you know hoops or whatever. No. We don't use terms like that. Uh, in America, the classic ring is the captive bead ring. It's a simple thing. It's just a curved piece of wire with a ball that's held in by spring tension. Now, in Europe, I believe they're known as bead closure rings. Either one of those, I'm happy with. As far as circular pieces goes, you have a couple of options. You have what we call a seamless ring or sometimes a seam ring, which is essentially a captive bead ring with no bead on it where the ends match flush. Now, of course, they have to be bent open and closed. So if for larger gauges, you would have to use something called a segment ring, which very much like its name implies, is a ring that has a segment that is removable and reinsertable so that it kind of replicates the closure action of a ball. You have curved barbells. Now, there's, like I said, there's not a lot of variations on this. When it comes to barbells, you have three types. You have the straight, classic straight, you have curved, and you have circular. Now, folks, horseshoes are something that goes on the feet of a horse to protect it, all right? Get it straight. This is a circular barbell. Both ends unscrew, they can be interchanged, but it's not a horseshoe. On the same topic, Bananas are a tropical fruit that has a, yeah, a funny yellow peel 
that monkeys seem to like. This is a curved barbell. It's not a banana bell. I'm gonna rant a little bit about plugs. All right, folks, if it's solid, it's a plug. If it's hollow, it's an eyelet. Tunnels are something you drive through, like you go through a mountain or something. Kind of drives me insane. You have a couple different styles. When we talk about single flare, we talk about these guys that naturally have one flare on one side, and the other side is basically smooth, usually held, held in by a O-ring stuck on the back. Double flare has a flare on both sides and requires a slightly looser piercing to insert and remove those from pretty much exclusively in the realm of earlobes for that. The other variety is called hangers. All right, folks, these are called hangers. Now, I know y'all want to call them gauges. Please resist the urge. This stuff is sold by gauge, and once it's over double zero gauge, it's sold by fractional inch or millimeters. But let's be honest, folks, the, the dictionary is quite clear on this. A gauge is, so, is something to measure something with. To gauge something is to ascertain the value of something or to manufacture it a uniform thickness. If you want to enlarge a piercing, we call that stretching. Say it with me now. Stretching. Now, if you send me another question about gauging your ears, I'm not going to answer it because now you've been told. This right here is a surface anchor. I don't like the term microdermal. I don't like the term dermal on anything because it's it starts moving over into questionable legal territory when you use the word dermal, implying something about skin. It starts to intrude upon the medical professions and we don't like that. So, real simple. Let's all just call it a surface anchor. Agreed? All right, I'm glad we're all on the same page. Surface bars, they should look kind of like this, like a staple, only upside down. Notice I don't have a single piece of plastic out here in front of me. Because professionals typically don't use plastic. I'm not going to say unequivocally that they don't. I have seen some guys who use some flexible stuff and have some certain amount of success. But for the purposes of talking about jewelry terminology, that is a surface bar. Once again, body jewelry is sold by length and gauge. Not, we don't call them gauges, you know. For instance, this little barbell right here, just by looking, is a 10 gauge. What is that, about 5 eighths, 3 quarters? Yeah. So, 10 gauge, 3 quarter inch length. Real simple. And while we're talking about that precision in the language, you don't go and get your labrette pierced. You get your lip pierced with a labrette. You don't go and get it your industrial pierced. Show me an industrial on your body. You don't have one. You would get an industrial piercing or an industrial project or something like that. But you certainly wouldn't say that you got your industrial pierced. That's ridiculous. <sighs> Which I guess kind of leads me over to the names of piercings. And this is where it gets to be a bit tough because there are some classic names of piercings that have been around for a while and I guess have kind of been accepted. Sometimes those are named after body parts. Sometimes they're named after people that got them or even people that influenced them. I'll try to remember all of them because there's like 45 piercing names out there that I know of. or 45 standard piercings that I can think of. Let's see. Well, while I might not necessarily go through and say all the ones, I'm going to hit the big ones. If you get two piercings over here in the corners of your lip, guess what, folks? Those are fucking lip piercings. They're not snake bites. Snake bites are something that a snake does to kill its prey. All right? Cyber bites? How in the do you even get bit by a cyber in the first place that makes zero percent sense 
But then you might turn around to me and say, well, but you say philtrum piercing, JC. And I say, yes, because this is called a philtrum. On all mammals that have a little bit of a cleft in their upper lip, that anatomical body part is called a philtrum. So we would call that a philtrum piercing. Or you could even say getting your philtrum pierced because you have a philtrum. You don't have an angel bite. So you're not going to get your angel bites pierced. You're going to get a pair of upper lip piercings. I guess that also kind of goes into the Monroe thing. I mean, I'll accept it when somebody says Monroe because, once again, that's been around for 15-something years. Or, and I believe it's stood the test of time. Bites, I still am surprised at the different bites combinations. So please do us all a favor. When you walk in and you... You see those cases full of anatomical, industrial strength, body vision, and all that good stuff? Don't ask about bites. I'm just trying to keep you safe, happy, and looking intelligent when you go into your local high-end piercing establishment. I'm not going to go into great depth and detail on tools because it's really not my intention to be making DIY how-to videos or piercing education videos. This is more for the general public folks so you don't get taken or suckered or bamboozled or sold low quality products or taken advantage of but for these deals we are going to need to talk a little bit about this tapers now you just notice folks when i was talking about jewelry i didn't involve tapers at all that's because tapers are not jewelry tapers are tools use these to gradually enlarge a piercing or to help with an insertion Notice I also don't have any big ones over here. I only have a couple, but I don't have any big ones. Why? Because I don't really use them over about double zero. It's not a good idea. Of course, don't get me wrong, I will be doing the comprehensive stretching video in the future. For those of you who are still unclear on the idea of wait for it to get looser on its own and then put a slightly larger piece in there. I don't know how complicated that's supposed to be, but I digress. The last thing we're going to be talking about is the appropriate implements to do piercings with. I use three varieties. You'll hear me talk about first is your classic piercing needle. Nowadays, we would call that either a tri-bevel needle or in Europe and Australia, New Zealand, stuff like that, they call them blades. I'm fine with either terminology, but back in the day when it was the only type of piercing implement that was really available, we just called them piercing needles. Now that there are multiple types, we specify by saying tri-bevel. Also notice the O-needle or chamfer needle, depending on the manufacturer their own internal terminology, and I'm happy with either one. It essentially is the exact same thing as a biopsy punch, just as you'll notice, biopsy punch has a big handle on it. The O needle does not. O needle is a little bit longer, a little easier to maneuver, where this is a little more unwieldy. Biopsy punches are regulated medical devices where these are sold by piercing suppliers to any old happy piercer out there who can now cheerfully go and use them on anybody they want, whether or not they have proper training with them or not. Well, I apologize for the thinness of the content this week. I've been in the process of moving. Plus, it's the end of the year. It always brings a whole bunch of wackiness. So, guess what? We didn't shoot on location or do anything crazy today. But I still feel like it was important and needed to be said. Don't worry, though. We'll be coming back next week with even more wackiness for you. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you ought to. Helps us out. Plus, you never miss a video. And of course, if you support what I'm doing, then share it. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Tumblr is the reason I made this video anyway. The people on Tumblr said they wanted to hear about terminology, so... Guess what? We're hearing about terminology. Give out swag to engage subscribers, so leave me a comment down here, people, in the bottom section, or hit me up on the various social media networks. Send me an email, something like that. Let me know you're paying attention.
of course, you can stop back by next week. We'll have yet another episode of The Modified World. Wamp, 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 wamp